everyone. Welcome. I am Enrica from Plant Powered Metro New York, Queens. Plant Powered Metro New York is a community-based organization committed to our collective health empowerment through whole food plant-based nutrition, which is an evidence-based approach to nutrition that can prevent, treat, and even reverse chronic disease. While we normally prefer to offer live sessions to build community around health and nutrition, we are offering this program as part of a web series during the season of COVID-19. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Kassaker. It is good to be with you. Really an honor to have you here. Um, you are a man ahead of your time. I was, uh, you were on PBS doing um, programs. You truly a pioneer. And so now with the, with what the health, what can you tell us uh, as far as what's evolved so far with um, the science, perception in society, resistance? What's your, how are you feeling about it? Oh my. Uh, well, it's good to be with you and your viewers. Thank you for arranging this wonderful event. Uh, to give a full answer uh, to the what the health uh, uh, question, we have to turn the tape back a little further. Uh, when the producers of What the Health uh, came to me several years before, uh, Kip Anderson and Keegan Kuhn, uh, about uh, their first film called Cowspiracy. And the premise of that film was that if large-scale industrial agriculture is the driving force behind all these environmental disasters, Amazon rainforest destruction, deforestation, water pollution, soil erosion, global warming. If large-scale animal agriculture is driving all that, why aren't the major environmental organizations saying anything about this? Uh, and if you go to their websites, there's uh, nary a mention of it. And they explore the reasons why it has to do with money and politics, as you, uh, as you might well suspect. Keep the pace of the piper uh, uh, calls the tune. Well, uh, I was glad to be interviewed for that. Though when I, they were asking me about what I thought about dairy products, I answered honestly that uh, cow's milk is, is baby calf growth food. We really don't need to be eating it for, for any reason. But while I was giving that interview, I had a little trepidation on my shoulder that a doctor, uh, the dairy industry you know, has some very powerful ag gag laws and you do anything, you say anything that diminishes their sales, they're gonna come after you uh, legally. Uh, and you'll be very sorry, but the truth is the truth, and I was just talking straight biology, and if they came after me, they did. Uh, so I gave the interview and got back, saw the rest of my patients that day. I didn't think much about it uh, until the film came out. Uh, I was uh, very, uh, very happy to see the effect the film had. But of course, the film, especially to this physician, kindled the question right in the parallel universe there, well, if eating all these animals uh, and the animal-based diet that most Americans indulge in uh, is the driving force behind all these diseases, the clogged arteries, the inflammation, the, the high blood pressure, the diabetes, if, if eating all these animals is the cause, you know, the, one of the main driving forces behind all these diseases, why aren't the doctors saying anything about this? It was exactly parallel. Uh, well, having MD after my name, I had to, uh, I realized that they're asking the very same question I had been asking for the last uh, many years in my practice. So when they came back to me and said, doctor, do you, uh, uh, would you care to comment about why your noble profession uh, doesn't pay any attention to what our patients are eating? Oh, I had something to say about that. I, I had no trepidation <laughs> about, uh, about expressing my, uh, my views. And you, and you saw that in the film, What the Health, uh, as we talked about the larger scope of, and how embarrassing, how embarrassed I am at my profession's ignorance uh, about the importance of our patient's diet. Uh, you know, we, I've been going around lecturing the medical students um, at, the, at the medical schools and saying, you know, we've been treating nutrition like 
like uh, in the Harry Potter movies, Voldemort, you know, the arch villain, the name that must not be spoken. Ooh, don't ask about the patient's diet. We're Americans. We can eat whatever we want. Yeah, but your arteries got something to say about that. Your your uh, <clears throat> your prostate gland's got something to say about that. If you have one, your pancreas, your liver, your body got something to say about that. And <clears throat> I've been telling the students, don't you, you can't practice medicine like what our patients are eating it has no effect on these diseases. That's why they're sitting in front of you, obese and hypertensive and clogged up and diabetic and inflamed from what they're running through their bloodstream every four hours. And if you're going to practice medicine by just seeing them once a month and raising their statin doses and raising their metformin dose and say, come back in three months, yeah, you're, you're part of the problem. You know, that's, that's band-aid, that's bankrupt medicine. Um, you want to heal these patients or don't you? I ask the med students. If you do, then get real about why they're sitting in front of you. And uh, it's, it has to do with what they're eating. It's the food. So, uh, so um, we asked about how the, uh, how, what the health affected uh, my, my practice, my practice. It, it made me leave my practice ultimately, I suppose. And I realized that uh, as much as I love clinical medicine, my energy is better spent talking to the medical students and giving them the lecture I wish someone had given me 50 years ago. <clears throat> and, and I tell them before you order another $500 set of lab tests, and another $1,000 scan, ask your patients what they ate yesterday. And if it's full of burgers and buffalo wings and pepperoni pizzas, that's why they're sitting in front of you, doctor. Send them to the plant-based dietitian. Let her do the counseling. Let her show them the videos. Let her take them shopping. Yeah, because when I say, well, I don't know anything about nutrition. You don't have to, doctor. Just know that there's someone sitting in front of you with a diet-based disease. Send them to the dietitian who knows what she's talking about. And you see them back in a month, and they're going to be leaner and healthier people yeah, if they change to a plant-based diet. So, um, so we can talk about how, uh, where my energies are going lately, but I'm very grateful to what the health, uh, because they, they focused in, they snapped into focus my noble profession's abysmal, embarrassing lack of, uh, of nutritional awareness. And uh, we can talk about why and how and how to fix that uh, over the course of our chat here. But um, to all my colleagues, it's the food. <laughs> Dr. Clapper, how do the medical students react to your message? The medical students uh, react very favorably because I'm uh, the one, maybe I'm ahead of my time, but one, one aspect of this time that I'm grateful for is that it, in 2020, in every first, second, third year medical school class, there's 30 or 40 young students. They've seen movies. They've seen forks over knives. They've seen what the hell. They, they've seen the conspiracy. They've seen these stuff. The lights on already, and they know that you know it's in it's in the literature. It's bubbling up through medical journals, and their friends are talking about it. And we're going to be fanning that flame, and uh, that I'll tell you about in a minute with our program. Uh, so uh, the students are open to this, and those who aren't. And there's a lot of paleo young folks and keto folks, and uh, but they've got an honest interest. They're open. If you can show them another viewing, they're still impressionable enough. Yeah, I want to reach them before pharmacosclerosis sets into their brains. And uh, and in those early years, they're still they're willing to weigh the evidence, and the evidence is so overwhelming. So the students have been very open to it. Uh, behind your question, I think, is, well, what, is the, what does the administration think about? What does the medical school say about? Uh, and we don't, general, we don't mess with them. We, we do an end run, go right, right to the students. Uh, the students, have, often they have lifestyle medicine groups, or there's one young professor on staff. Or there's one family pra professor family practice who's, who's plant-based, or there's other... Uh, 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 an ophthalmology, fourth year ophthalmology resident at, at, at University of Pittsburgh last week. Uh, she hosted, she uh, uh, Skyped me in and, and I gave rounds on diabetic retinopathy and plant-based diet. Um, so uh, the students themselves or sympathetic faculty members, they arrange the event. They'll reserve the lecture hall, they'll send out the notices, they'll put the, the notes up on the bulletin boards. 
and um, they get the words out. We just do an end run around the administration. But administration, they're, they're, the science is getting so solid, there were, there's less and less uh, resistance, but you get a lot of professors in the bag saying this is unproven and we want to see 500 double blind placebo controlled studies to, you know, before we'll even acknowledge that there's something here, you know. And, but they're, they're going to be just pushed aside. This wave is breaking. You know, the plant-based medicine is where is at. Uh, and, uh, and the young students know it. So we've been going right to them. And if people are listening to this video and you, and they know, if you know a medical student uh, who is open to this, who would like me to Skype in or present rounds, um, or if you're on a faculty at a medical school, go to my website, drclapper.com, D-O-C-T-O-R-K-L-A-P-E-R.com, and click on Moving Medicine Forward. That's our initiative to get me in front of the medical school audiences. And there's a little blue square at the bottom there. If you know a medical student and you want us to contact them, please click here and give us their information. And we'll get in touch with them and talk about uh, Skyping me into their group there. So. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a time to, to get that get that ball rolling, and uh, the young students are open to it. Uh, I'm very and grateful we, for that. Mm -hmm. Right. And do you think that, given what we now know about the uh, impact of comorbidities on COVID-19, that, that this will accelerate what you're seeing in medical school? What a fascinating question, because as you know, and I tell the young students, well, you know, you're in medical school learning about all these weird and wonderful diseases from smallpox to leprosy. But when you get out in the real world and you open the door in the emergency room waiting area or in your own medical office, you're not going to be seeing people with smallpox and leprosy. You're going to be seeing people, a large group of folks with a small group of diseases. They're overweight. They have diabetes, high blood pressure, artery disease. Excuse me, and a bunch of inflammatory conditions. <clears throat> um, and especially the obesity, the diabetes, the high blood pressure. Um, these, are, these are serious threats. They lead to heart attacks and strokes and cancers and early deaths. But it's easy to kind of push them off. Well, yeah, I know I'm carrying too much fat, but one of these days I'll get around to it. One of these days I'll die. It's been easy to push off these chronic diseases. But now that we see the COVID virus loves obese bodies because uh, they don't move their lungs very well because they got a lot of abdominal fat pushing up under their abdomen. Obesity is a state of inflammation. There's a lot of inflammatory molecules come out uh, of, of, the, of the abdominal fat that that prevents the immune system from mustering a good response. Uh, the folks with high blood pressure have heart failure, backs blood into their lungs, make it easier for the microbes to uh, invade. Why is that important? Because those killer, but put it off kind of conditions, the obesity, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, the COVID virus has brought it right into focus immediately in front of the, that big belly, that diabetes, that high blood, that's a threat to you now. You need to do something about it now. And the beauty of adopting a whole food plant-based diet with lots of salads and soups and greens is that within days, the obesity starts to melt away and the arteries open up and the high blood pressure comes down and the joints stop hurting, the skin clears up and the asthmatic lungs stop wheezing so much and the migraine headaches go away and they turn into normal healthy people again that are much more resistant, I would think, if they run into the virus It'll just be a, a fever and an achy, fluey feeling for a couple of days and, and be much more mild. So this is, there's a couple of silver linings, a couple of gifts from this virus. And one, if, if it helps people uh, clean up their diet, I, I, you know, we could use these next weeks ahead of us as a, as a healing tunnel to go in there, eat healthy, take a walk every day, you know, reduce your stress, get enough sleep, get, drink enough water, come out of this, this tunnel healthier and it'll have been a blessing for you, as painful as this ordeal has been for all of us. So, yeah, the COVID might uh, might have some gifts for us, quite a price, but might have some. And do you want to read the, some of the questions, or Vivian? Sure, absolutely. Sure. Hi, Mr. Hi, Dr. Clapper. Um, uh, one of the the first question I see here is: Is it true the Lifestyle Medicine Organization is preparing questions for the American Medical Association to include the impact of whole food plant based foods on the exam? 
Oh, how yeah. important! What a, what a, this, that's an inside question. Um, it's absolute. It's an important one and absolutely valid. Uh, and it comes out. It's we ran into the realities of medical education and licensure. I was up at the University of Washington in Seattle, and I gave my talk, and we had a nice response. But afterwards, this professor of surgery comes down, and he says, "Good talk, doc, but between you and me." until the National Board of Medical Examiners starts asking nutrition questions on the national board exams that, that all these young students have to pass before they can get a medical license. A national board doesn't pay any attention to this. Uh, and so until they start asking questions, we're not gonna be teaching this stuff. And uh, that set off some alarm bells and I went, and so a number of uh, folks started talking. We went to the National Board of Medical Examiners and they, and they said, what, what does it take to get uh, questions on the exams? And they said, well, we don't know anything about nutrition and lifestyle medicine. They said, why don't you, so the, the agreement was uh, the National Board of Medical Examiners told the American College of Lifestyle Medicine you guys make up the questions. You guys come up with a pool of a thousand questions. Let us take five or 10 of them and we'll start plugging them into the exam. Uh, and um, so yes, that, uh, that process is happening. And, and as we speak now, uh, quite a number of my colleagues are busily uh, researching questions. Not all of them have to do with plant-based nutrition. I'll bet you there's going to be a few, you know, stress reduction and exercise questions and olive oil questions, et cetera. But a uh, uh, bunch of us plant-based docs uh, hope to ride herd on this and, and make sure that they, uh, they get a, you know, a few plant-based nutrition questions like, uh, on, on the national board exams. And once we do that, the medical schools will start teaching to that exam and it's going to get much easier at that point. So yes, that process is happening. Good question. Wonderful. Thank you for answering that. Um, do we have time for another question? Okay. Got all evening. <laughs> um, we have a question here that says, if doctors know how to read and have an understanding of the nutritional studies and the science the evidence is clear. Why is there still skepticism um, towards that information? Absolutely. There's uh, three or four reasons. Uh, one, again, doctors say, listen, I don't know anything about nutrition. This is all uh, black magic to me. Uh, don't, you know, it, it's not a real science. It's sissy science. Real science is surgery and cardiology. This is, you know, uh, it doesn't matter if they're eating cheeseburgers or not. They're ignorant of the subject. They don't have respect for nutrition. Very importantly, um, they don't get paid for doing nutritional counseling. Um, they, uh, uh, they, they don't have the time to do it. And they're eating the same stuff themselves in the hospital cafeteria and when they go out to the restaurant, they're eating their steaks and lobsters. They're not gonna tell their patients not to eat it. Which leads us to that sad spectacle of a doctor with a big obese abdomen and a pocket full of statins and beta blockers and medications for their own artery disease. You can't expect to cure people if you don't set a good example for them. So why not? They're resistant. And finally, they can sit on their ivory tower and say, well, show us the double-blind placebo-controlled studies uh, that it really makes a difference. Um, well, you can't do those with nutrition. People know what they're eating. And to decide whether this diet or that diet works, you, the person would have to eat the same diet for 25 years and see who's still alive. Then those studies aren't going to be done. So you've got to, you need other types of evidence, and, but they're not willing to look at that. If people are interested, go to uh, the True Health Initiative, uh, Google that, and you'll see how nutrition studies can be evaluated using different criteria. But they said, well, show me the double blind placebo control studies. Uh, and they're not going to be coming. So they say, ah, it's not a real science. But meanwhile, every one of us who doctors who's practicing lifestyle medicine and gets folks on a plant-based diet, we see what happens. We see them transform within weeks. These diseases go away. These are reversible diseases. And these young docs need to know about it. The old docs need to know about it. And for them to deny their patients, I think is unethical at this point. Yeah, to deny, I, I tell them in my lectures, uh, even if you don't believe the, uh, yourself, you, you at least owe the patient a three page handout on the way out the door. Uh, you want to get rid of your diabetes, I want to get rid of your high blood pressure, I want to get rid of your lupus here. 
go to these websites, see, see these videos, and, and call, talk to this dietitian. You at least owe the patient that. Uh, you, can't, you, know, you can't withhold it any longer. The patient will find themselves, hopefully. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's, we're, it's like turning an ocean liner, what we're trying to do here, but it's the most important work I could be doing. It, that ocean liner's got to be turned. How nice to finally see some nice young doctor you go to their office, and one of the first things they ask you is, what are you eating? Huh? What, what's your nutrition like every day? Uh, that's what we're trying to create, and we'll do it. It's inevitable. It's really good. Um, go ahead, Enrique. Did you want to no, We had another question from uh, Andrew. Yes, we do. Um, uh, for pre-medical students and medical students, is there a best way for them to encourage this way of eating whole food plant-based diet and lifestyle despite being sort of at the bottom uh, rung of the ladder, um, if you will? Uh, maybe because they they don't have their degree just yet and they don't have that credibility. But what's the best way for them to influence? Oh, uh, with that, oh, such an important question. The best way by far is do it yourself. Set a good example. You don't have to say anything. Just do it yourself and, and make the food taste great. And make, make up some dynamite chilies and Indian curries and Oriental stir fries and uh, make up some, uh, you know, some wonderful foods and share them with everybody uh, and uh, bring them to lunch for with lunch to, uh, to, with you uh, for lunch. Uh, that's the best thing. And meanwhile, read and learn to uh, the uni Google the University of Winchester in, in the UK. They have a six week course in plant-based nutrition, that is excellent. Take the University of Winchester's plant-based nutrition course. Take, um, uh, there's a lot of good nutrition certification courses. I'll go to pcrm.org, read everything on that website. Go to Dr. Furman's website, Dr. McDougall's newsletter. Educate yourself uh, and you'll be able to draw on all that information as you get uh, into your uh, health profession studies. So. So set a good example and, and feed your brain at the same time with, with the science and you're going to wind up in a great place and you'll know why you're there. Do you have any other questions, Vivian? Uh, yes, that sounds like sound advice. <laughs> um, we have a question here. Can whole food plant-based diet help combat the effects of the chemo administered by pill? Um, can it help chemotherapy? Yes, it can uh, for a number of reasons. Um, again, the, the, our cells depend on the chemical message that we're giving to them, uh, largely through what every meal uh, brings into our, into our body, but the thoughts that we have uh, to, when you're under stress, it makes your adrenal glands put out a gush of cortisol and cortisol suppresses your immune system. So certainly even you know, our thoughts, how much we exercise, go out for a walk every day, that helps our immune system. Uh, nice power walk, makes your heart beat fast and runs lots of blood through your kidneys and that lets you excrete waste products. So it's all of a piece. Um, yes, we'll get to the whole food plant-based diet, absolutely. But, but again, a healthy head, drinking enough water is important. Give, give your kidneys plenty of water to flush things out with. Take that walk every day. Get enough sleep. The body heals when you sleep. So get enough sleep. It's all, we're holistic creatures. You got to make the whole organism uh, harmonious and flowing. Uh, and that includes a whole food plant-based diet. One of the beautiful features about it is a high water content diet, all those soups and salads and steamed veggies have lots of water in it. And that water is filled with these phytonutrients that promote tissue repair. So every salad is medicine for you. Every bowl of vegetable soup is medicine for you. And they just flush through your, your tissues with this high water content phytonutrient rich solution uh, hour after hour. Man, that's gotta help flush out uh, the remnants of chemotherapy, plus bring in lots of good things, um, uh, you know, as far as uh, promoting tissue healing. Um, and finally, uh, fasting, uh, just drinking water for a couple of days will potentiate chemotherapy. If you've got chemo planned, 
don't say anything to your oncologist, but go in on day two or three of a water fast. And uh, as Dr. Longo's work and others show us, it potentiates uh, chemotherapy while protecting your stem cells until you get more effect out of, uh, uh, out of a, uh, getting chemo in a fasting state. But after that, after the chemo, absolutely jump on that high water content, whole food diet, lots of salads and soups. And I think give you your best chance of, uh, of getting the chemo working and feeling good afterwards. Wonderful. Um, we have one more question uh, in the chat box, I think. Um, I believe you addressed this a little bit earlier regarding the skepticism among medical professionals, but do you think that there's also hidden incentives um, uh, for the medical professionals um, and hiding the information from their patients about the nutrition uh, because of the profit that's involved? Uh, no, I absolutely have to disagree with the premise of that. Uh, and as much as I'm frustrated with my profession and angry at my profession, it's due to their, their willful denial, their willful ignorance. They wanna stay ignorant. They, um, they're afraid of the subject. You know, there, there's cowardice, there, there's willful ignorance, but I don't think they're venal. I don't, they're not doing it for money. I don't know of any physician who knowingly withholds vital information patients because he's going to or she's going to make more money uh, from doing a procedure or whatever. They, you know, they say the only tool you know how to use is a hammer. The whole world looks like a nail. So, uh, and asking a surgeon if you need an operation is like asking a barber if you need a haircut. You know, what do you think they're going to say? They're going to they recommend the surgery and all that, but it's not to make money. It's not to, it's the best that they know. They think they're doing something good for you. And so, no, they're not venal, but they're overlooking this powerful, elegant, available tool, their patient's diet. And, uh, and that's, the, that's the original sin that we're, that we're trying to correct here. But uh, no, you, you can be angry at doctors for lots of reasons, but, uh, but not because they're, uh, they're making money off your illness. Uh, that's, uh, I don't think uh, is the uh, underlying premise. Can I jump in with a question? Somebody uh, put in the chat, uh, not to everyone by mistake, um, can you talk about right now with COVID-19, we've got a lot of people with low energy, mental illness, depression. Can you talk about whole food plant-based nutrition and how that affects our state? Of yeah, there's no question. We're finding out, uh, much to our humility, um, that what we eat affects everything. Why? Because it, the food you eat it changes the microbes that live in your gut. And these microbes are not passive bystanders. They actively metabolize the food you eat and uh, put out uh, byproducts uh, that are neurotransmitters. They put out dopamine and norepinephrine and, and GABA and, uh, and serotonin, They're, and it affects our mood, it affects our, uh, our perception. So, so again, eating a whole food plant-based diet uh, uh, is the, one of the best things you could do for your psyche and your emotional state. You know, it's a common place, uh, us folks doing plant-based medicine, when we hear a couple weeks in the patient say, and I feel so much better, my spirits are better, my wife says I'm happier. And we all just kind of took that for, yeah, well, they're, they, they lost weight, they they're got more energy. But we see now that it's probably some real neurochemistry going on there uh, from the complements of their microbiome uh, affecting their, their emotional state. Um, does that mean eating a whole food plant-based diet is immediately going to make you feel and singing and dancing and, uh, um, and do a Ray Bolger down the street? People don't remember Ray Bolger, uh, but uh, he's, he's a dancer. Um, no, and we've got real troubles in this country. We are hurt and it's easy for me with a profession that's going to support me to, uh, to talk about low stress, etc. But if I'm a young father with three hungry kids who just lost his job, don't know where my paycheck's coming, where the rent's coming from and my car payment's coming from, hard to tell him not to stress and not to be depressed. The, uh, they've got good reason to, and I fear for them. I, I, I uh, feel so I hurt for them. Uh, and, um, 
but do the best you can, get, at least for your physical. So all the more reason to eat healthy, all the more reason to take a walk out in the sunshine at springtime where you are, go out and enjoy the, the get some sun on your face, get some fresh air, feel the wind in your face, uh, maintain that connection, you know, sleep as good as you can. But yes, it can, it's one fraction of the, uh, of the whole mental and emotional outlook. It's a big fraction of your diet, absolutely. It won't cure everything. But, it, but to sit in and eat uh, you know, bacon and Cheetos and you know, just load up with a bunch of, of fried animal muscle and, and hydrogenated oils and, and high fructose corn syrup and, and all those toxic molecules that are in a standard junk food diet. Boy, if there's any way to poison your microbiome and, and make a really dreadful neurochemistry of sort, that, that's the recipe. So eat healthy, be healthy, and hopefully uh, we'll all get through this uh, not too bad a shape. It is going to get better. This, uh, these things go around the earth once or twice, and then they, they do fade away. Uh, we've seen that with SARS. We saw it with MERS. Uh, and there's going to be lots of immunity. But it's been handled so badly. I can't let the government off the hook or any, anyone. It's just been terribly botched. But we will get through this. We'll go on if we don't tear ourselves up in the meantime. Uh, uh, do as much as you can to help your neighbors and give to the food bank, volunteer at the food bank, uh, make sure everybody's got enough to eat and that they're okay. This is a time to look after each other. That, that's the best way to get through. Um, if you don't mind me jumping in, Erika, sure. um, this sounds like a good question. Do you have any thoughts about how to reduce the influence of big ag and processed foods? I'm sorry, uh, my phone rang. Sorry, do I have any? Did I? About what are your process? thoughts on? I, I I suppose on an individual basis and as a society, but how to reduce the influence of big ag and processed food? Oh my! Um, I, you know, caveat emptor, buyer beware. You know, eat or beware. Um, uh, caveat etor. Um, Educate yourselves. Uh, you know, the simplest thing is you eat whole plant foods. Eat foods that you could recognize like they were growing in the garden. Oh, there's a, there's a tomato, there's a cucumber, there's spring beet. That's what you want to eat. Um, things out of edible food-like substances out of brightly colored packages and boxes are toxic to us. They're full of fat, salt, and sugar and chemicals that, that hurt us. Um, Know that eating sugar as a food hurts you. It ages your tissues and it spawns diseases. You know, eating sugar, eating fats and salts and processed foods are, are harmful. Um, it starts with knowing that. And two, it become, it comes, and then it comes down to acting on it. How do you do that? There's only two points in your day where it comes into play, where you have complete control. That, number one, is when you're pushing that cart down the aisle in the supermarket, what you decide to put in that basket. If people don't buy the stuff, they're, they're not going to be making it. They're all, they don't care about your nutrition, right? They just care about money for their, profit for their stockholders. That's all they care about. Well, if you stop buying a product, and we've seen it with many products, they disappear off the shelves. Well, that's what should happen. You buy your produce and get out of the store and let all the rest of that pretty colored stuff just rot on the shelves. And the other place is, at, is in the restaurant when you got that menu in front of you. And uh, uh, every time you look uh, the way at the wait person says, I'll, I'll have the chicken, I'll have the veal, I'll have the beef. Every time you say that, your children's world gets a little hotter and a little drier and a little deader. And you are paying the slaughterhouse companies, and you are paying to put more greenhouse gases in the air. It has such a powerful effect. When you order the, you know, I'll have the, the, the chicken and veggies, but can have the chef hold the chicken. Can you do that for me? Oh, yeah, we can do that. Poof, changes everything, and it educates the people you're dining with. Um, so, order the plant based entrees when you're out in the restaurant buy the whole plant foods when you're shopping. Everything else, will, you don't have to say a word to Big Ag. They will get the message. And we're seeing it now. We're seeing these big Tysons and Smithfield. They're making veggie burgers. That they, the handwriting's on the wall. They see it. 
that the death industry is dead, death, the dead industry. And, and it's so poetic, horribly poetic that the COVID virus is, is taking the slaughterhouse workers off the line, you know, to shoot. the animals are shutting the slaughterhouses down. These are animal viruses. And um, this is so, so powerful, but it shouldn't have needed to come to that. And the message is from the animals, stop eating us. We are not your food. You can't keep doing this, cooping us up by the hundreds of thousands for slaughter and feeding. We're not your food. Uh, you are plant-eating simians. You have fingers on your hands, not claws. You got big, long intestines like your gorilla and bonobo cousins have, and they're up in the trees eating leaves and fruits tonight. You are plant-eating creatures. Go back to your plant-based diet, and this all gets better. You'll get healthier. The world will get healthier, and these animal-based viruses will disappear. That's the message. Uh, <clears throat> it's the Western Union telegram from the animals. I hope we uh, open the door and... and open the envelope and get the, get the message. Uh, and so don't buy the stuff. Don't eat it. Don't buy it. Don't do the same thing to your relatives. Just say, no, thank you. Uh, and uh, this, and, <clears throat> and that you'll be doing a very powerful service uh, for yourself and the rest of the world. Uh, by Dr. Klepper, that's, yeah. that is really important. I, I have one more question I think might be a good one to end on. Sure. Um, if there were a pill that was touted as a cure for obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, card cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, and, and autoimmune disease, people would think the proponent of such a pill was a fraud. But a whole food plant-based diet can prevent and, and even cure all of those conditions. How do we get across that concept without, frankly, sounding a little crazy? Yes, uh, how many times have I said there in my lectures, if there was a pill that did all this, we would be trillionaires right, right now. But uh, um, every, you know, I, I wish I had the magic words to say, stop eating animals, eat plants, you'll be healthy. And everybody would hear it and say, oh, okay. And it would be done. But we're homo sapiens. We like that taste of steak in our mouths. We like that, that burger on the bun. Uh, and it's hard to pry the, that food out of the hands of the folks who like it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the of the new generation of veggie burgers, the Impossible Burger, all that stuff. No, they're not. No one's saying they're the bastions of health. But if it can get Joe Meat and Potatoes guy uh, put a plant burger based burger in his bun instead of a beef burger, I'm all for it. You know, so you know, so that'll help. But to the doctors, I say, listen, you know, these diseases that the, the, the you know, all the specialists treat, the, the internists use the clogged arteries, and the endocrinologist sees the type 2 diabetes, and the, and the cardiologist sees the high blood pressure, and the gastroenterologist sees the colitis, and the rheumatologist sees the sore throat. They're all looking at the same disease. It's what your patients are eating. And it's, it's like we've been running diesel fuel, kerosene, through a gasoline burning engine. And we're puzzled why there's black smoke coming out of the back as I'm running rough. Put in the right fuel and it run, the engine runs great, you know, and we're plant eating creatures and that's the right fuel. And so these diseases going away, it's not a panacea. It's just putting the proper fuel into the engine. And of course, the, the arteries open up and the insulin receptors clear out, the diabetes goes away. And it's not a miracle. It's you know when you when you stop hitting yourself in the head with a hammer, the headaches go away. <laughs> Nothing mysterious about that. Well, we're hitting ourselves in the head chemically three times a day with the, with our standard diet. Stop doing that. Eat plants and get on with it. And the uh, and the body gets healthy. You know, it's not that great a mystery. So, so what magic words will drill that awareness into people's head? Don't know. It starts with little victories of the people around you, the example you set. People will notice what you have for lunch. They notice how good you look. They notice the weight you've lost. Gee, you're off your pills, whatever. The word, the word gets around. Everybody has to set their, the, their example, and it'll spread through the society like, like a virus. And uh, that's uh, that would be the best, uh, the best way to get it through, get it permeating through our populace. 
and programs like this. It's a, we don't need a, another study showing that plant-based diets lower high blood pressure. We know that. It's education. It's getting normal plant-based diets normalized. This is what we should be eating. We want to be healthy and have a stable planet. And so it's a matter of wonderful platforms like this and you folks who put in this wonderful energy to reach your, your viewers. Um, that's, that's medicine uh, of a high quality that, uh, uh, that you're practicing tonight. I'm glad to be part of that for, with you. Thank you, Dr. Clapper. Thank you. And thank you okay. for all the work you've done for being the pioneer that you are. You are working from the top down and as a grassroots movement, we're supporting you from the bottom up. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. How lovely to hear that.